Norway's coastline is unlike anywhere else on Earth. It is a land of soaring cliffs and plunging fjords. These breathtaking fjords attract tens of thousands of visitors every year who want to witness the magical spectacle. But for the Norwegians themselves, the fjords and rugged coastline present something of an obstacle. Indeed, traveling up the coast, where around a third of Norwegians live, is quite a challenge, with roads tortuously weaving and winding their way between the towns and cities. Now Norway has a plan to fix its infrastructure problem. The new E39 highway will stretch from Trondheim in the north to Kristiansand in the south, taking its place alongside other monumental roads like Route 66 and the Pacific Coast Highway. In this video, we'll explore this awe-inspiring mega-project finding out just how the staggering 47 billion is being spent. Welcome back to our channel. If you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell, so you get notified every time we upload a new video. Norway has always been a seafaring nation. The towering cliffs of the fjords provided shelter to the Iron Age farmers and fishermen. But these narrow waterways connected to the sea also functioned as the perfect harbor for the fleets of longboats that pillaged Europeans from the 8th to the 10th centuries. Gone are the days of the fearsome Viking explorers and raiders, but the fjords and rugged coastline remain. Carved over millennia by immense ice sheets, the fjords are a lasting reminder of the ice age which once ravaged the earth. Today, if you wanted to travel from Kristiansand to Trondheim, you wouldn't take the longboat, but the ferry. Indeed, the E39, a 1,330 km road stretching from Denmark to Norway, is routinely broken by ferry stops crossing the fjords. There's no continuous road. As such, the entire journey takes a monumental 21 hours, involving seven ferries, the most ferries for a single road anywhere in Europe. That's where the newly planned coastal highway comes in. The Norwegian government has embarked on an ambitious 30-year plan to increase investment and cut travel times. Initially, the project was hoped to be finished by 2038, but with costs rising and needs elsewhere, the 30-year timeline seemed more feasible. It's not hard to see why the project is delayed. Each stretch of the highway requires an engineering marvel. Take the $2 billion Boknafjorden tunnel, for example. Crossing a 27-kilometer subsea section, it will be the longest, deepest tunnel anywhere in the world at 390 meters below sea level. In fact, the project involves two tunnels, connected every 250 meters with emergency exits. At 500 meters intervals, each tunnel will have a lay-by, with telephones and surveillance cameras scattered along the route. This ambitious tunnel system will also include a mid-route intersection at the island municipality of Kvitsvoy to connect the island to the mainland. Work on the colossal underwater structure was begun back in 2018, with an estimated completion date somewhere around 2026. Moving north, Bjornfjord is 5 kilometers wide, reaching depths of 600 meters. Here, engineers aim to go over water, not under it. Their solution is a floating bridge. It might sound crazy, but floating bridges are actually found throughout the world. In fact, Norway already boasts two of the world's longest floating bridges. As you might imagine, the problem is how to anchor the structure to prevent it from floating downstream. The bridge can either be anchored at each end or side anchored to the seabed, a feature seen in the floating bridges around Seattle. As Ada Matthias Eglund, the project manager for the Bjorn Fjord Bridge, explained, the big challenge for a side anchored floating bridge here, compared to the ones around Seattle, is the depth. The deepest mooring on the Hood Canal Bridge is 120 meters below sea level. Here, it is over 600 meters at its deepest. To the Norwegian team is just one more headache-inducing engineering problem. Elsewhere, at Sula Fjordan, a bridge is needed to cross a 4-kilometer stretch of water. Here, the middle pillar must reach down to the seafloor, 400 meters below. It's a significant challenge caused by thousands of years of glacial erosion. But an alternative design has also been submitted, involving two interconnected floating tunnels held down by immensely strong cables attached to the seafloor. But nothing comes close to the Sognefjord crossing, known locally as the King of the Fjords. The name is deserved, measuring 3,700 meters in width and a mind-numbing 1,300 meters deep. It's a crossing sure to keep the engineers up at night. Designs are complicated by a need to cater to car traffic while keeping the sea lanes open. Indeed, this vast sea highway stretches 205 kilometers inland, 
presenting a vital lifeline to Norway's interior coastal communities. Therefore, any crossing must allow clearance of at least 400 meters wide, 70 meters high, and 20 meters into the fjord's depths, all while being buffeted by the vicious winds of the Atlantic Ocean. Oh, and if that wasn't enough, it still needs to be affordable. Despite the seemingly insurmountable challenge, the ingenious team rose to the task, suggesting several potential solutions. The most obvious solution is an elegant suspension bridge, but at almost double the length of the current longest suspension bridge, and with high velocity winds, it's unlikely to be a viable option. Floating bridges like those at Bjorn Ford are also a possibility, but to allow sea traffic through, the bridge would need to be precariously high, posing a considerable engineering challenge. Finally, a floating bridge is another potential option. Here, the bridge would be tethered not from the seabed, but from floating pontoons overhead. Engineers have also considered a hybrid proposal, where a section of the crossing would be submerged to allow a ship to pass overhead before becoming a normal pontoon bridge. If completed, it would be the world's first hybrid floating structure. Whatever the Norwegian government opt for, the benefits are clear. The finished route would be almost 50 kilometers shorter, and travel times will be cut in half, to a reasonable 10 and a half hours. The new route will feature no more ferries and will be significantly easier to navigate. But with an emphasis on safe and sustainable building methods, the engineering team certainly has their work cut out. As the largest infrastructure project in the country's history and one of the biggest engineering projects worldwide, we eagerly await the finished result. When it's finished, it might just be the greatest road trip in the world. But what do you think? Is this mega project a groundbreaking engineering marvel, or do you think the Norwegian government has gone a bridge too far? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out more videos on our channel. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.